Yeah, hi, um, my name's Michael Hellier. I'm 39 years old and um, I'm here to talk about how God can change lives. Um, you can have a really horrible, horrible past and um, you know, God can pull you out of it. Um, you know, as, as people we quantify sin and um, God doesn't do that. He looks at us and says, ask for forgiveness and I, I can grant you forgiveness. And I think as being sinners, we tend to think that because we've sinned so much that God can't forgive us. He really can. And um, I'm here now because I'm living proof that God does save lives. God can turn things around. And um, I want people out there to know that wherever you've been, whatever you've done, there is no sin that God can't forgive. You've just got to ask. So I started off life living in Balmain as a child and um, it's a pretty rough upbringing. It was a rough area so you had to be tough and it was no no place for God and uh, my parents were atheists, didn't believe in God at all so when I decided that youth group was a good thing they didn't support me so I had to do it on my own. So I went through school, tough, getting in trouble all the time, discovered drugs which you know happens when you're down in Sydney and yeah I didn't have a good life, it turned me away from God so you know, went through life um, just bouncing through as you do and then uh, you, you grow up and you think you know the answers and you just don't, yeah. without God in your life you, you go nowhere. So I got involved with Christ Church which is an Anglican church and uh, thought I knew the, knew, the, knew the Lord and we went through life, communion, uh, got confirmation, met a girl and got married, uh, had two children and then um, at that time I joined the Army Reserve so I learned how to drink alcohol as you do and uh, it's just one of those things you know you, once you hit the addictions it's hard to ditch them and it really destroys lives, um, alcohol and drugs. Um, sexual perversions, um, all kinds of sins like that, they just they take you away from God. So I had a failed marriage, um, you know, I'm never the problem. So I went out into life and got into more alcohol and more drugs. Uh, partying, loved partying, just lived to party. Anyway, I travelled around Australia partying every town, working hard, blowing my wage going nowhere, life just seemed aimless. Uh, met a girl and got married again. Again, no, no focus in my life and aimless. It's during this time that um, I noticed a lot of b bad behavioural changes happening in me. Uh, I got into spiritualism, I got very deeply engrossed in it. And went back to drinking and uh, the drinking was bad. Uh, recreational drugs were, was a bad thing. And I noticed I had a really fiery, horrible temper. And I became somebody that people wouldn't want to be around. But why would you want to be around a person that's always drunk, that's angry, wants to fight people, fires up in pubs and nightclubs and wants to stir up trouble. And it got really bad and um, one night, on, I drank way too much spirits and uh, had a disagreement with my wife at the time and um, it got physical and unfortunately um, you know, a man should never harm his wife and never hurt a woman. Unfortunately I left her my hand once and I felt so bad and remorseful that, um, which I bear the scars to this day unfortunately, I, I took a knife to myself and tried to end my life at that point. Um, I didn't deserve to live. I'd, I'd hurt a woman, you know. um, and it's really it, you get you get pretty low at times, and you shouldn't do this. And uh, it was pretty bad. It was a bad, bad time, and that broke up. And then I'd been gently exposed to the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and there were some friends that were there who I'd worked with. And at this point, you know, I'd started to to question 
what I'd learned in the Anglican Church. You know, I'd, I never heard what the Sabbath was. I, I knew nothing of that. Um, the health message, what was that? I'd never heard it. And, and the sanctuary, never heard that. Uh, so I asked, I asked a few questions and it, everything seemed right. You know, it, it seemed what I was reading. They said, don't, don't take our word for it. Go to the Bible, refer it to what's in the Bible. And you know, at that point, I started to feel something. I really felt like um, what I was reading, what was happening was right. And life sometimes takes a turn and, and this is where Satan himself obviously turns you away from God. Things were going great. I was involved in baptismal studies and wanted to know God more. But I don't think I had the conviction. I don't think it was in my heart. It was the outward appearance of being Christian, the outward actions of being Christian, but it wasn't in my heart. I hadn't, I hadn't accepted Christ in my heart. And again, I went to a party with a friend and I thought I was strong. You know, I'd, I had God by that stage and uh, how, how, how wrong I was. You know, like I was saying, I didn't have God in my heart. And you really, you really sink to low points and I thought I could fight this and no, I was introduced to alcohol again and I am slowly drifted away from God and I moved back to a town uh, in Mackay, Queensland and I got involved with work and you know, I knew the Sabbath was right at that point but I hadn't had the conviction in my heart and went back to work, went out partying on Saturday nights, you know, all the, the partying was great. I, I, that's one of my addictions, alcohol and partying. And I uh, met another girl, got into a serious relationship. She was very much deeply involved in spiritualism. And I, I, don't, I don't hold her accountable for that. You know, it's not her fault. I mean, I, as God says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And that felt, it felt good. The spiritualism thing, it's, it's one of those things that it drags you in, it, it grabs you. and you think it's right because you go to these these meetings and they read your cards and you have these little gatherings where they bring out spirits and you leave feeling great and warm but then you crash and burn and we were we were going really great but unfortunately um, the alcohol came in again and with the alcohol came the angry outbursts the swearing the cursing the wanting to fight people um, and, and even to the point I became so, such a bad person that I intentionally upset people to cause a fight to see what reaction I would get. That's, that's not right. No, it's, why do we do this? Because Satan gets a hold of us. And he's not like it. He walks through the door and, and kicks your door open and says, here, have a drink. It's so gradual. It's so gradual over a long time you don't even see it until you until you're out of control and it's too late he's got you and it's amazing isn't it how um, sometimes God can use a tragedy in your life to turn you around he can take something away from you make you actually hit rock bottom to make you look up and I think I really love that the God, that Lord has never, never left me. And it was only up until recently I thought life was great because I had a good job. I had a girlfriend that um, was working. She had a great, great salon. Um, I thought she loved me and I know she did in her own way. Um, and I loved her in my worldly way. And what's been missing from every relationship I've known through my life, why I've had two failed marriages, why I've had two significant failed relationships, that important missing ingredient was God. That God-shaped void we have inside, it wasn't filled. I tried to fill it with alcohol, drugs, um, one night stands, partying, it was never right. And had another relationship fall apart, another poor girl heartbroken, myself heartbroken. And you just, you start to wonder what, what, what's the question? 
What's the answer? What really is the answer to life? What do I need to find happiness? Don't, don't I deserve happiness? As a, as a person, I, I, I just deserve happiness. And then God decided that um, earlier this year in 2013, I had a birthday party. Um, I had 40 people there flown in. It was a surprise party, including my parents. And uh, really got onto the alcohol. And the relationship I had with my partner at the time. Been going bad for about 12 months and I hadn't seen it because I was more involved in looking after myself. And as long as the parties were right, the bank account was big, that's all that mattered. Didn't think of God because life was great. So the 27th of May this year, I got extremely drunk. Um, and I'm not proud of this, but God forgives. Um, I was an absolute fool. Um, angry, throwing things around the yard and onto the roof of the house. Because my partner had been unfaithful. And can I blame her? I hadn't been a, a good partner. I hadn't been a, a good husband. I wasn't a nice man to be around. You wouldn't, people wouldn't want to know me who I was six months ago. I was a horrible, horrible man. So there were all these little messages that I'd learnt when I was at the church in Emerald that little messages that I'd, I knew were right and God had been trying to break into me and tell me what was right and I hadn't listened. And then after that night, my partner left me I said you can't deal with it anymore and my world fell apart my world just just fell apart um, i was gutted i thought i was doing great and uh obviously i wasn't so i turned to alcohol again surprise surprise um, decided to go partying to try and drown my sorrows turned back to drugs uh, which didn't fill the void, never does. And uh, started getting involved in bad things again. Um, and just decided that, what, what, how do I fill the void? What's missing? And went to see my father for, for a fortnight to see if he had the answers. He didn't. But about this time, God started throwing messages to me on the, on the television set about wars and rumours of wars and I knew that was from the scripture so I knew it was true and then um, other things about the end of days and I thought hey I remember that that's in the scriptures but still I was on alcohol I was still smoking weed but you know we've got to come up from our past and a lot of my anger from the past was led from sexual abuse as a child and that's something I've always had to try and deal with. And uh, it's hard and it makes me angry. I don't like getting back to a corner. And it's just amazing how you just don't know what to do. So more copious alcohol and partying. I came back and this is, this bit's hard. Um, Cause now I have to admit that I'm wrong, but God forgives. September this year, September 18th, I flew back from Sydney and um, I was really depressed because um, I hurt my ankle again so I couldn't, wasn't very active, um, I was restrained, I couldn't do much and I landed in Mackay in the afternoon on the 18th of September 2013 and I decided something in me said I, I have to find God. He said, I have to find Jesus. So I got on my phone, I tried to find a phone number for our local church. And you know, Satan never gives up, never gives up. I got nine different phone numbers that were wrong and incorrect. And I was reaching out and there was no one there. 
and try and try and try as I might. I kept getting the wrong number. And at this point, a voice in my head, just give up. It's not going to happen. And about 9.30 at night, I found this number and I thought, this, is, this has got to be a phone number. And I called this pastor, and his name's Luke. And um, I got a message, I got a, left a message on his message bank. And I left it at that because I thought, well, I was depressed. I, I didn't know where to turn to. And about 9.37, I got a call back from Luke, who's, our, who's a pastor. And he started talking to me about, we talked a little bit about God and how to be rescued. And I felt a little bit elevated. And he said, come to Sabbath. Come to Sabbath this weekend and we'll talk. So he called me on Friday and we had a bit of a chat about converting my life back to God. And something in me stirred, but I still wasn't really convinced because I'd planned a, spiritual, a spiritualism weekend with um, like seances and that to find out what the answers are. So I thought that would, that would cure what's going on inside me. That'll cure the, the hurt in my heart. That'll give me answers. So I went away for this weekend, went to Sabbath, couldn't deal with being in church because something inside me said, you don't need to be here. You need to be somewhere else. So I went to this weekend and on the 22nd of September, 2013, which is only two weeks ago today, I'd finally decided that I had the answer. I'd been to the spiritualism weekend. The spirits had come and told me. I finally had the answer. And that answer was, um, I decided to commit suicide. I, I couldn't deal with this anymore. I planned it in my head. I was going to take a drug overdose because at least, at least I wouldn't have to deal with the pain. And I had a quiet conviction. Once I'd decided to end my life, everything went quiet. And it's amazing how God works. Our God is so awesome. He intervened. I had dreams. And that Monday, following that Sunday, I met up with Pastor Luke and talked. And we began Bible studies. And you know what? It's funny. I'd, committed, I'd tried self-help. I tried all these different methods to try and help myself and pull myself out of this and it's amazing because I'm sitting here now shaking like a leaf as I tell you this story because hopefully the story I tell you may help someone or touch someone maybe my words that I'll tell you now will save you from doing what I nearly did because God is truly great we started Bible study and it's truly incredible what the Lord can do, can do because I decided that I could fix my problem and when, after prayer and a few Bible studies and talking to God I realised I, I can't I can't change me I can't change who I am this person can't change it's only then that I got the feeling and the conviction that only the Holy Spirit can change me so I started asking God, Lord, every day I get up half an hour early for when I have to get ready for work and I pray. And I say, Lord, can you please change me? I don't want to be who I used to be. I don't want to be the old Michael. I want to be this new man that people can look up to, that I can tell stories to, I can help people bring them to God. I asked God to change who I was into who I should really be. And you know what? You think it takes a long time. You think that it's because we try and change ourselves that it's gonna take such a long time, like years and years and years. I'm sitting here now talking to you because two weeks ago, I wanted to commit suicide. I'm sitting here now because I had messages coming to me I've met, I've prayed to meet 
people that who share my religion. I want to meet people who have been in the same kind of circles that I've been in, that could understand, that I could relate to. I've asked God to, to change my heart, to give me people in my life that I can talk with and feel comfortable with and feel safe. And we're at uh, one accord today and uh, some of the messages God are telling me, God's putting up there, I'm sure, are just for me. And yesterday I felt con uh, compelled to write something I've got in here now, which I'll share with you, because I hadn't been exposed to Revelation before. I'd never seen it. And um, I was writing these notes. I'm very, I was shaking like a leaf, which says the date. 22nd of September 2013. There's a date in my life I cannot remember, cannot forget ever again. That day, that day, that was the day, live or die. So I'd made the decision, I was going to die. But God intervened. And I'll tell you what, what a transformation in two weeks. God has the power to change us instantly. You ask God to cleanse you with the Holy Spirit and He will change you. It doesn't take years or decades or months. You ask God, you give it to God and He can change you. You may not see it, but people around you will see it and you will feel it. And, and the change is incredible. It's not it's not a small thing, it's, it's massive. All of a sudden you just, you, you change and you don't think of the old ways. God has ways of slowing us down. And he slowed me down by injuring my ankle so I had to stop and listen. He takes us out of situations and we know not why. He took me out of a relationship that was based on spiritualism. God kept saying, look at me, Michael. Look at me, Michael look at me Michael and I didn't listen he said take my hand I didn't take his hand then he said look at me Michael and take my hand and I listened and he said welcome home my son he puts people in your life that I have prayed for and I have asked repeatedly Lord please change me as I have tried on my own and now God says watch me change you God says, watch me change you. And you know what I've come to the conclusion? <laughs> what a truly awesome God we have. And the, the thing is that God or Jesus never left me. He never left me at all. God has said, welcome home. And I asked, what do you mean, welcome home? And God has said, welcome home. And I asked again, what do you mean, welcome home? And you know, he walked with me through this journey. He walked with me. He knocked at my door continuously. He kept knocking at my door. And two weeks ago, I was lost. I was lost to the world. I was lost to myself, to my friends, and to my God. I finally heard the knocks. I saw the door. It was never locked. It was always open for me to enter. And what I want to share now is that now I'm finally home. I'm walking with God again. I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm now walking with God. I'm home. I'm walking with Jesus again. It's absolutely amazing what has happened last two weeks of my life are going to change me forever so it's not impossible give your heart to God give your heart to Jesus he too can change you regardless of what sins you've committed there is no sin that God can't forgive you of just ask and you'll receive it you can walk with God it's never never too late. Thank you.
for giving me this opportunity to tell you my story.